I am not a DaVinci Resolve optimizer. I have not min-maxed my DaVinci Resolve in any way, shape, or form. This is just the system that I have found works best for me. So I am sure, actually I'm not even, I'm positive. There are probably more efficient ways of doing things inside DaVinci, but as somebody who does do this for a living, this is just, this is what I found works best for me. So generally speaking, when it comes to organizing my projects inside DaVinci Resolve, I have one database. I have one project library where I have all my videos. Now for somebody who maybe works with a team of editors or you use uh, cloud-based editing, story's gonna be a little bit different, but I work with one database um, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a solo editor. And typically the way I organize things is I will create a bin or a folder per client or per person that I work with. So for example, I have my own folder and in here I have different projects for videos that I'm working on. And so I also help with the uh, Around the Bar podcast. So if I were to open this up, you can see the various projects that I work on. So again, per client or per person or per whoever I'm working with, I will have a folder set up and inside that folder, I will have the various projects set up. Now you could go ahead and subdivide this even more, but generally speaking, what I do from here is I will make a new project based on the style of video. So what that means is, let's say for instance, I'm doing a very specific video style for that, like a trailer or a unique video, I will create a new project. But if I'm doing something specifically for like long form YouTube or something for social media, like short form content, what I'll do is I will create a project for that style of content. So for Around the Bar, I have a project set up specifically for short form content, meaning that all of the short form editing that I do lives and exists inside this one project. Why do I do that? Well, because generally speaking, what I tend to find is that when I edit a specific style of content, so again, like long form media, stuff for TikTok, uh, YouTube shorts or whatever like that, I will typically use similar formatting effects, audio for that style of video. So instead of me making a new project per, per TikTok edit, what I'll do is I'll just work with inside one project. And then if I need to go and use something from like an old edit, I can go quickly grab it instead of like trying to like restore a project database. And so within this one working project where I do all of my short form edits, I will have a couple of, let me change the icons a little bit bigger so you guys can see them. But I will have a couple of like general folders where I'll share media across every project. So like I have an audio folder here where I have sound effects set up that I can use for any timeline and I'll have music that I can use for any video. But what I'll do is I will set up a subfolder for that specific episode that I'm breaking down. Okay, and I <laughs> I need to change these back down to the, uh, the list icons because I don't like them big and bulky. That is gonna drive me insane. Um, within this short form project, I will have subfolders per episode. So what I'll do is Anytime a new episode gets done recorded and then it's my turn to make it into short form content, I'll create a new folder and we can go to uh, episode 41. I'll import the footage, which is this, this is the, uh, the full footage. And then I will create two timelines. I'll create a bulk timeline, which is the entire episode cut. Okay, this is all the footage that we need. And then when it's time to start editing short form, what I'll do is I will scrub through this and I'll pull out a clip and I'll pull it up a track. So that way I know that's where it lives. And then I'll have a vertical timeline. So I've got two timelines. Generally speaking, this is for like short form editing. I'll have two timelines. I'll have like all of the footage set up and then I'll have a, um, a vertical timeline where I will do my short form editing. And so what I'll do is I will take, I'll take a snippet from the bulk of the footage Bring it over here. And then if I need to bring in assets for a specific edit and assets, meaning um, music, sound effects, imagery, uh, some kind of a render, what I'll do is I will create a subfolder within the episode folder for that cut. So for instance, uh, this one was like a fun little TV kind of edit. So I made a TV folder and in here I've got a couple songs. I've got some overlays that I used for that specific edit. I 
normally will work on one timeline per episode for short form editing, just because short form edits, you know, that it's like anywhere from like 30 seconds to 60 seconds long. So I just like to have it all set up on one timeline. And the reason why I like to do that again is because, because this is all within one project, one folder, and this is all on one timeline. What I can do is there's like a specific formatting style that I like to do for around the bar where one guest is on top of the other. So you can see both of them talking. Well, this comes with a specific zoom position and crop. So instead of like going through and resetting it up over and over, I can just go to a previous cut and then grab the properties over here. You know, I can just copy this clip and then go over here. And then if I wanted to, I could paste the properties, right? So again, when I'm working with a specific client, I will create a folder for them. And then within that folder, I will create sub projects depending on what I'm working on. If you don't work on a podcast or something that's not episodic, I would just probably create a new folder for that specific kind of edit. So an example of that is if I go up to the symphony project, you can see that on my master project folder, I have just a couple of other sub folders for quick shorts. So these are like really quick edits. <laughs> this, this bin needs to be cleaned up, but then I'll have like uh, sub projects for uh, sponsored edits and other things like that, but they all follow this vertical timeline format. Generally speaking, that's how I choose to divvy up my projects. How would I actually start a new project and kind of get things laid out? Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I will go ahead and create a new project. Uh, it doesn't matter what we name it. Here's what I'll do. The very first thing I normally do is I will go over to my project settings and we need to set up our settings for the project that we're working on. I typically work in the gaming world and on gaming videos. So my project settings are gonna be tailored towards that. If you're somebody who works with uh, camera footage or um, primarily like talking head videos, your settings are gonna be a little bit differently than mine. But what I would do is I'd go over to my project settings, right? That's down here in the bottom right corner, open that up, go up to the three dots up here and I would load in my 60 FPS preset. I typically work in 1440p as well. So I'd load that preset. And actually for the most part, I don't work in 60 FPS anymore. I tend to work in 30 FPS. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve is a little bit more forgiving now, but this setting used to be really important, setting your frame rate and your res at a time, because otherwise down the road, you can run into a lot of problems. And the only other setting that I have changed here is my uh, proxy and caching defaults. So I think, actually we can go back to the default settings, uh, load preset. So by default, these are, these are the default settings, right? These aren't my presets, your uh, proxy and caching optimized media formats are a little bit higher quality. And so what can happen is that your hard drive gets filled up with memory pretty quickly if you begin to cache. So what I have set up, and let me go ahead and go back to my preset. I, everything, I have everything by default just turned down to high quality. If you're curious about this sort of thing, there are more in-depth breakdowns on what these different formats represent. I would recommend either doing high quality or standard quality. When you go to render out your footage, it will still use the original footage. So generally speaking, what you choose to go with here does not matter to a point. So just to a point, it doesn't matter. We just wanna use like a lower formatted Kodak. Um, I like to have caching turned on after two seconds. The default is five. I just kind of want things to start caching immediately. And I also have checked on that it begins to cache transitions and um, composites, meaning layers stacked on top of each other in user mode. I just generally have more success using the user cache mode over the uh, smart one. If you don't know what those are, caching is a way to kind of like pre-render footage on the fly. And the smart mode is DaVinci Resolve's smart way of caching where you're at while you're playing. And user is kind of just like a blanket shotgun approach to just caching everything all at once. I just, I like user. I like user if I'm gonna be caching. Uh, the only other thing that you'll want to have set up is the proxy and cache file locations. Those should be somewhere on a local hard drive. Don't set these up on an external hard drive. I have a second 
internal D hard drive where I have all of those set up. So I will, after all that's said and done, um, I guess we go back to 30, I will hit save. So now we have our project settings all set up. Uh, from here, what I will do is I will go over to my power bins. I've talked about power bins a bunch in separate videos, so I'm not gonna go too in depth to them, but if you don't know where they are, they are up top in the media pool. Make sure you have them uh, toggled on using your option, little three dots up here. Not smart bins, power bins. We want power bins turned on. So this is where we can save our presets, text templates, effects on adjustment clips and stuff like that. So what I'll do is I have a bin structure set up that I will import. And it took me 30 seconds to set this up. If you don't have something like this set up, please do. And I promise it, it, it seems like such a small thing, but it just, it saves so much time down the road. So I will go to my project presets bin. I will go to my long form YouTube bin structure, open that up. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, is it seven? Did I count right? Seven folders, that's it. I will go ahead and I will drag these bins and put them in my master media pool. And now I have my basic setup for beginning to import and work with footage. I guess I could quickly call out what these folders are. I have an audio folder. I like to have a one general audio folder and then I subdivide that into music and sound effects. So for me, when I'm looking for audio, I just go to my audio folder and then depending on whether or not I am looking for a music track or I'm looking for a sound effect, I will then go within. But what I do wanna call out, and this is, again, these are set up in my power bins in this folder. I have sound effects already set up and saved in here. So this is in my power bins folder. If I go to my Woosh's subfolder, I have Woosh sound effects that I commonly use in videos. But so these were brought over when I dragged these folders over. So if I go to my media pool, go to the master folder, audio, sound effects, go to my Woosh's folder, I have all of my Woosh's. These are just common files that I use. These are not the only ones that I use. As I begin to work on a project, I will continue to subdivide my sound effects folder into things that I might use. So I might even, you know, so for instance, like if I know I'm gonna need some uh, interfa interface sounds, cause I'm gonna be building out some kind of like UI kind of a look for this video, I'll just go ahead and drag this folder into my sound effects folder. And boom, now I have all my sound effects ready to go. I just want to quickly call out that when I bring and drag on folders, uh, if you want to keep your folder structure intact, you need to drag the folder over to the left column over here and not the media pool itself. Cause what this will do is it'll dump every file into the media pool. If you want to actually keep the folder structure, drag it up over here to the left. And for me real quick, I guess this is uh, my general folder structure set up. Again, I have audio, I have B-roll. This is going to be for outside imported footage. You can see I already have some footage set up there. I have my effects. These are going to be adjustment clips that I use for like slow zooms. These are some uh, quick blurs and some shakes that I'll use. And again, this will continue to get built out as I work on a given project. I also have images. This is for stills or any sign of like outside assets like logos that I'll bring in. A recordings folder, this will bring, be where I bring in the bulk of my recordings. So let's go ahead and bring in some footage real quick. So this would be an example of like a gameplay video that I might be working on. I'll go ahead and drag and drop those in. And if I have a lot of footage, again, I will subdivide this. So if it was like a multi-day shoot, I'll split this into day one, day two, and <laughs> continue to subdivide it. Or if um, you know, I need to be more specific with like whose POV is recorded, you know, we'll subdivide it into each individual person's uh, point of view. Okay, so that's would be where my recordings live. Uh, I have a renders folder. I use this uh, twofold. I actually do some 3D modeling, so I might bring in Blender renders in this folder, or this is my folder that I'll use for when I'm rendering things in place. So if my caching doesn't work, I have a folder set up for renders. And then uh, similarly for VFX, I don't know, this is kind of like just my miscellaneous, if I'm working on things that I want to uh, bring in something with a cool look or whatever. A lot of times I actually delete this folder because I just don't end up using it. But for certain cases, I do. And the last question I'm gonna answer, and I'd like to expand on this at some point in another video is, you know, like, okay, well, how do you start the video? Like, how do we begin to like piece together a timeline? This is a tip that I learned uh, a while ago that I have continued to implement and I really enjoy using it. Generally speaking, I will make two timelines. I will have one and I'm gonna call it bulk. It could be named all, um, 
you could uh, you can name this whatever you want, but we're gonna create a bulk timeline. I'm gonna go over to my viewing options here and turn on display stack timeline so I can see the timelines that I'm working with. And then I will have a main timeline. This will be like my working timeline where I'm actually doing my edit. And on the bulk timeline, what I will do is I will go over to all of my recordings and drag and pop them in. Okay, so now I have all of my working footage over here. And what I will do is with this footage, I will start to go through and pick out moments that I think are usable. They don't have to go in the final edit, but they'll just be moments that I'm like, okay, this could be usable. So I'll go ahead and make a cut. I will drag clips that I think I could use up one track. Go through. Okay, cool. This could be used. Okay. This could be used. And if it's something that's really good, what I'll do is I will drag and I will bring it up two or uh, yeah, two track levels. So I'll bring it up one extra track level. And so we'll just go through and we'll start chop chopping things up. And it doesn't have to be precise. It doesn't have to be exact. You just kind of want like a general layout of uh, your footage that you want to be used. And let's say this whole back half is something that I think is important. Now this process, depending on how much footage you have, will be painful. <laughs> it will be painful, it will be slow, it's a good one to do caffeinated early in the morning, but the perks of doing this are uh, a couple things. For one, you familiarize yourself with all the footage. As an editor, it's something that I think is really important because it is so easy to miss important moments, shots, if you do not actually go through all of the footage. The other reason that this is nice is now we basically have a working cut, a rough cut of our edit. So what I can do is I can go through and just grab these upper tracks. So I'm not dragging down below. I'm just grabbing these upper tracks here. Put control C to copy them. I'll tab over to my main timeline and paste them in. If I zoom out real quick. We have all of our clips here. Now I have this mapped to a shortcut, but now what we can do is we can actually go up top to the edit menu and hit delete gaps. And again, I have mine mapped to a shortcut. Boom, drag it down. And with that, we have a like a working cut of the best moments of our edit. How you choose to space these out and you know, if you need to drag something over so you can insert something in here, go crazy, do whatever you gotta do. But the nice thing about doing this is that for one, like we said, you know, we've got the best moments picked out that we can begin to work with. But if we need to go back and access any of our original footage, we can tap back over to the bulk timeline and we can also visualize where we were beginning to pick and choose some of our footage from. Two other quick notes about this. For one, you can have more than one bulk timeline and one that more than one like main timeline. So if again, like if you had a multi-day shoot, maybe you need to have a bulk a timeline for day one, for day two, whatever, so that you can kind of visualize all of your footage across multiple days. Another really useful trick is you can add in markers. So I just did, I, I clicked the little button here or M is the shortcut. We added a marker in here. And if you want to call out specific locations, you can hold down the Alt key to split up your marker. And I want you to look up top here as well. And now what I can do is I can highlight certain sections of my video footage. Again, I'm holding down the Alt key. So again, at a, at a quick glance, if I were to go over to my bulk timeline, I can click to a per certain section that's highlighted to find more footage that's useful. So hopefully this is somewhat helpful for you guys. If people are actually really curious about like editing <laughs> workflow techniques, maybe I can make a dedicated video. But generally speaking, this is how I organize my stuff and get started on projects. Um, yeah, if you guys have more questions, join the Discord and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.